No mushroom is poisonous unless you eat it. This kind of sounds like a dad joke, but it's unfortunately kind of true. Not all mushrooms are evil, but there are several types of mushrooms that are considered to be the look but don't eat variety. And some of these mushrooms have caused some literal great pains over the course of history. A good rule of thumb, unless you have a guide or an expert, it's best not to eat any mystery mushrooms unless you can properly identify it. In this video, I want to talk about deadly mushroom poisonings. What happens when you eat a deadly poisonous mushrooms? What are the actual toxins and what are they actually doing in the body? And why is it that certain nefarious mushrooms even make toxins in the first place? At the end of this video, you'll know that yes, some mushrooms are in fact deadly, but no, you shouldn't be fearful of running into them in the forest. Foraging for mushrooms in the wild has been an essential practice for different cultures around the world for centuries. Today, of course, a lot of modern foragers just do it for fun or for a tasty meal. Frankly, it's just a great time to get out into the woods and randomly go look for mushrooms, finding porcinis and oysters. It's one of my favorite things to do. If you're a forager though, and you plan on eating some of these mushrooms, it's obviously pretty important to know which ones you might be able to eat because, well, we wanna stay alive. Mushrooms contain a lot of different chemicals and different compounds and have a lot of different characteristics for culinary reasons, but also for medicinal reasons, but also they create chemicals that can be very poisonous. In general, the idea that mushrooms are poisonous or should be something to be feared is pretty overblown. When you think about it, with over 10,000 species that you could find that produce mushroom fruiting bodies, only a small handful of those, about one to 2%, actually contain compounds that are poisonous to humans. To put it into perspective, if you were to go out in the woods and randomly pick a mushroom on the ground, the chances of it actually being poisonous are pretty small. It'd be similar to the chances of picking a random plant out of the woods and having that be poisonous as well. There is a variety of different effects that mushrooms can have on the human body. Best case scenario, if we've chosen the right mushrooms, we get a full tummy after a delicious meal. Weirdest case scenario, obviously, we have a very strange few hours where the walls start breathing and fuzzy blankets feel incredible. Now, worst case scenario, well, let's investigate what might actually happen to the body if you do indeed ingest a deadly poisonous mushroom. Although just a few deaths occur annually, up to 90 to 95% of those deaths from mushrooms come from species that contain something called amatoxins. So species like Amanita phylloides, or the death cap, and species like Amanita virosa, otherwise known as the destroying angel, contain lethal toxins. The fast acting ones are known as phallotoxins and virotoxins, but the most insidious ones, the ones that do the most damage, again, are compounds called amatoxins. The amatoxins are violent, slow-acting compounds that contribute to the absolute worst parts of mushroom poisonings. The deadliest of these is a cyclic peptide known as alpha-amanidin. This terribly effective amatoxin shuts off a key enzyme in our body that allows us to produce protein, which obviously is pretty important. Although all organs like the kidney and the heart and the brain are all vulnerable, the one that is most at risk is the liver. This is because the amatoxins get recycled in the liver again and again and become very highly concentrated. And that's the reason why many victims of the death cab will eventually need a liver transplant. If you were to eat one of these mushrooms, you might feel pretty sick at first, but then you'll feel better and you'll think, oh, maybe that was just the food poisoning or something like that. Well, all along the time, while you are kind of feeling better, the amatoxins are being recycled in your liver and doing serious damage to your organs. Eventually, you will feel really sick again, but by that time, it's quite often too late to really do anything about it. Left completely untreated, it will take about six to 10 days before the victim of an amatoxin poisoning will actually die. It's estimated that somewhere between 10 to 30% of death cap poisonings actually do result in death. Keep in mind, it's not only poisonous amanitas that can have dangerous consequences. There is a pretty famous case of author Nicholas Sparks, who was hunting for what he thought was a portrait mushroom, but it was actually a deadly cortinarius, and he ended up needing a kidney transplant after a very severe illness. And I don't know how you quite mix up the cortinarius with the porcini, but again, this can totally happen, and it needs to be kind of kept in the back of your mind if you're out there foraging for wild mushrooms. So at this point, you might be wondering, why do mushrooms produce these toxins in the first place? Well, here's one possible explanation according to Tom Bruns from the University of California. The quick answer is we don't really know, but 
the prevalent theory would be that they're making these to prevent them from being eaten by other organisms that would chew up their fruit bodies before they can sporulate. Exactly which organisms are being targeted isn't clear in most cases. So humans love mushrooms, but mushrooms are also considered delicious by other species like squirrels, deer, mice, and even large blue caterpillars. With a few exceptions, of course, mushrooms generally dislike being eaten just as much as the next guy. Mushroom fruiting bodies in general have a pretty short lifespan, and they need to do everything that they can in order to spread their spores and have the ability to reproduce. So in general, mushrooms don't like being eaten. But there are some interesting exceptions. One of them is something like Amanita muscaria, which does have some compounds that are toxic to flies, like ibotenic acid. But as the mushroom starts to open up, the concentration of that toxin is much diminished, and that allows the flies to come in, get covered in spores, and fly off and help kind of disseminate the spores and help Amanita muscaria reproduce. Another example might be like a dung-loving mushroom, where animals might eat the mushroom and the spores are process through the body and end up in the dung, you know, that process of getting ingested through an animal might help that mushroom reproduce. But for the most part, again, mushroom fruiting bodies don't want to be disturbed, they don't want to be eaten, they just want the ability to fully grow their caps and disseminate their spores. Other organisms in nature do create similar compounds, obviously, but it's still unclear just exactly how mushrooms picked up this nasty trait. So we've already mentioned that it's really only a small percentage of poisonous mushrooms that are actually lethal. There are, of course, a number of mushrooms that can make you sick, but for the most part, symptoms are something that might be similar to food poisoning, and symptoms usually resolve themselves in a number of hours or days. But again, full disclaimer, of course, nobody wants to even get sick at all, so the best way to avoid that is make sure if you're foraging mushrooms and you're planning on eating those mushrooms, to join up with your local mycological society. If you're based in Canada or United States, the best bet is to check out the North American Mycological Society website. There's a giant list of all the clubs and different societies and very likely you can find one in your province or state. At the very least you should go foraging with somebody who knows what they're doing and is familiar with the mushrooms in your area. As I always say, when in doubt, throw it out or better yet, don't even pick it. The other reason why local knowledge is so important is because mushrooms can be distinct, not only depending on where they are geographically, but also where they are in the life cycle and what time of year it is. So even if you have a really good book and you see a mushroom or a picture of a mushroom that's obvious in say Washington state on the west coast, and you're trying to apply that to something on the east coast, it might be totally different. So local knowledge is really important when you're looking at harvesting or using the mushrooms that you find in your forest. The bottom line here though is that mycophobia for the most part or being scared of wild mushrooms is completely overblown. It's not like you should be afraid to go find wild mushrooms and even handle wild mushrooms. And in fact, pro mushroom foragers or mycologists will often like take little nibbles of mushrooms and use the taste of the mushroom to kind of help identify it. Of course, they take a little nibble and they spit it out. They don't ingest unknown mushrooms. But in general, yes, there are some deadly poisonous mushrooms, but as long as you're not cooking them randomly randomly and taking them home and eating them, there really is nothing to worry about. From the information uncovered in this video, I think we can at least safely conclude that if nothing else, mushrooms are amazing chemists. They're able to make amazing compounds that support our immune system, they're able to make amazing compounds that are deadly poisonous, and they're even able to make compounds that help humans transcend reality. As the body of knowledge grows in terms of what is happening on a chemical level within the mushrooms, we can ask more interesting questions and hopefully gain more fascinating answers. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you do like mushroom content, be sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. We put out mushroom content all the time, hoping to expand your knowledge all about the fifth kingdom. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.